Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Splunk.conf19. Brought to you by Splunk. Welcome back to theCUBE everyone, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE on theCUBE here in Las Vegas for Splunks.conf19. It's their 10 years of their customer main event. All their top customers and partners are here, and of course theCUBE's been covering .com for seven years. Got a great guest from Accenture, Mike Heinlein, Ecosystem Adventures, Global Analytics, Plays and Offerings Lead, Accenture. Now, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Accenture always has long titles. Is that, that so let's is a very long that. title. You're a lead. That's a mouthful. Offerings. Yes. There's meanings to these titles at Accenture. This, like, this an... Yeah, so I'm part of the Ecosystem Ventures Group, which helps to incubate our various different channel partners and drive services with those partners. And then within the Splunk partnership, I'm focused on driving analytics offerings with various different practices that are already considering analytics and taking those to market. So you guys have a relationship with Splunk that's evolving pretty quickly. It is. What's the future look like? What's the current path? Take well, you? as you may be aware, we recently renewed our partnership with Splunk back in February. Uh, after two and a half years, we had achieved most of our goals. And where we were starting to see is that where our initial objective was to help our clients to get more cost takeout and risk associated with their IT and security operations, we also learned a few things along the way, which is the Splunk Analytics Engine can also be used outside of IT and security, and we can start to take it into industry verticals. And so one of the exciting things that we're doing is we brought our digital practice into the tent with us. We renewed in February. Uh, we have a couple years we're looking into the future, and we're going to not only double down in IT and security, but we're also going to start to build business analytics and, and IOT type solutions on top of within the vertical industries that we're focused on. What are those industries? Can you share them? Yeah, yeah. So, so it would be things like energy, utilities, where power line analytics to reduce the amount of vegetation that might take out power lines, cause fires, cause outages, um, patient flow, which would be how, how to help accelerate getting patients through the ER and also increase um, throughput for hospitals. Uh, within supply chain, we're doing a number of different things. We have four different offerings that focus on technology, telecom, retail, consumer goods, and manufacturing. So like industrial type clients. So pretty much standard vertical industries that you normally see That's correct. In, in the business. Yeah. So I want to get your thoughts on this because one of the observations I want to uh, share with you and I want to get your reaction is, is that with cloud and with data, it's interesting, These the data is a really key part of all this. You mentioned I, I, IT and security. Obviously that's pretty straightforward and you see that. But it's interesting, when you start adding machine learning and AI into things, the domain expertise of these verticals become the pacing item, the key, the key IP if you will with the scale of, the, of what's going on at That's the platform right. level. Are you seeing that? This is a, a, a fertile ground for opportunity. Is that how you guys see it? Can you share yeah, your reaction? Absolutely, I think, I think where uh, Accenture is strong is in our industry acumen, not just in IT and security, but within different industry verticals. And then you take our digital practice, which is where our data sciences live, where they're developing advanced analytics models, and essentially working with a lot of the open source modeling tools like Python, that uh, integrates very well with Splunk. It gives us the opportunity to take that data that can be bundled up, it could be data at rest, maybe three years of sales data, and we create a forecast with it and do that on top of Splunk. Or it may be something where within a supply chain or a flow within a, a hospital, we're able to use machine learning to start to move some of the uh, compute and thought from human beings to machines. What are some of the innovative services you guys have built on top of Splunk? Because they're, they got an enabling platform, so again, opportunities, what are you guys doing on the innovation so, side? Um, so both in the, the retail and in the technology space, we've created a couple of replenishment engines. When you think of supply chain, I need to know what my forecast is, what do I plan to sell, how many items do I need to have in inventory in the warehouse and in the store, and then how am I going to get those items, and then how many should I order the next day? So we're using Splunk to figure all of that out. What are some of the surprises and learnings you've gotten in dealing with Splunk? 
songs because there always seems to be a new revelation when people get data and they start playing with it and they get you know, insights. Yeah, but beyond yeah. that, there's usually some sort of business breakthroughs or kind of weird things happen when you start playing with the data. Any, any uh, uh, anecdotal surprises or learnings you've seen? Oh, well, a, a tremendous number. In, in fact, what, what, what happens is when you start to open up the silos, so most of our clients are stuck with a lot of legacy technologies that they've acquired over the last two or three decades, and Splunk enables to open a, that up to get insights that we couldn't before. So it could be, it could be I can get a patient through a particular process, a, you know, twice as fast as what historically I'd been able to do, or maybe, for example, uh, something that Doug Merritt mentioned yesterday, which is where we're partnering very closely with Splunk for uh, human trafficking. We've created an offering where Splunk had already gone out and created a data lake of a lot of data from uh, educational entities, uh, NGOs, government agencies, and we took that, built some machine learning on top of it, and able to identify high value targets or establishments that have a high risk of human trafficking, which is already starting to get results in Florida. You mentioned healthcare multiple times. Is that mm -hmm. one of your key verticals? It, it is one that's emerging and it's very exciting and it's kind of evidence of where we're working really well with Splunk. In a lot of cases, we've developed things and we take it to Splunk and we go to market together. In this particular case, Splunk created patient flow, took it to us, and now we're working to identify about a dozen different hospitals where we're going to go meet with our CEOs and talk to them about what we can do to help them increase profit and, and patient satisfaction at the same time. What's some of those conversations like? like when you go and knock on these doors and say, hey, I got a new secret weapon to solve your problems. Is, because it's, it's new things that people have these problems that couldn't have attacked before in the past. Now they have potential capabilities. What are some of those conversations like? Are they like, come on in, educate me, I want to buy right away, or door slammed in your face? I mean, how do you get people's attention? Well, so we, we just had a really exciting meeting with a very large grocer uh, in the Midwest, and as we was explaining the different things that we could do with Splunk. Um, she actually, the, the head of supply chain actually said to me, it, it almost seems like fairy dust to me. In, in other words, the hardest challenge that I have sometimes is, is being able to say, look, you're used to doing this in 24 months, maybe 36 months, I think I can do it for you in less than six. And that's just so hard for them to absorb. So, so a lot of cases it's, it's transitioning to, well, let us figure out how we can prove that to you and doing some kind of a proof concept or a pilot. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, when you, say, when you see people get set up with a data platform, it's kind of a, um, an iterative stage. Let's set the foundation, let's make sure everything's flowing in, Splunk, yep. if you will, and then you start they're getting some discoveries here and there, and then they get business value. And then it kind of goes to another level, and I think this is where I think I see you guys doing well and others here in the ecosystem floor, and that is, is that it's a workflow optimization issue. Then they go, wait a minute, we have all this data, well let's go do this, and that's a little bit more of a holistic business process or some sort of that's right. core challenge, is that how? Yeah, yeah, so I would say you always have a business process, at least in the industry verticals, and, and you have a lot of data that's siloed, and then you crack those silos open, and then it's really basically the intersection of what we would call planning and execution, which is, for example, maybe I have uh, an oil rig, and I have a ship that is taking materials and people back and forth, and but now I know that I have actual um, things headed to that port, where if I send the ship now, I'm going to have to come back in the next 24 hours. If I hold that ship off for two or three hours, then I can get more materials and people yeah. on board, and I don't have to come back for another 48 hours. So now I've just reduced greatly my operating cost. And I think that's interesting is that, you think about what you just said, yeah. and go back 15 years, and say, okay, what's the database schema to make that happen? The data's over there, it's over there, I got to write a query, that latency, yeah. it never happens. It's that's manual. exactly right. So, <laughs> so we're kind of out of the business of trying to fit square pegs into relational round holes, which it takes the better part of maybe 50% of a lot of projects to implement those solutions. And so with Splunk, you're basically dumping the data in and you're layering your schema on top of it, which enables you to accelerate delivery. And additionally, I don't have to cobble together and stitch together
together multiple technologies to do ingestion, analytics, storage, and visualization so I can mobilize teams much more quickly than I would traditional solutions. You know, Mike, I'd love to get your thoughts on Accenture's uh, transformation because mm -hmm. in looking at you, what you guys have done as a company, it's been interesting, you got a lot of successes, but the firm's been around for a while, right? So, in various different names, going back to the old school, back in the mini computers, you know, you guys were rolling out projects, some of them had long horizons, multi-year, now the speed yeah, yeah. game is completely changed. Cloud's here, you got data. How has the Splunk and these modern technologies yeah. changed the centers? engagement practices. Yeah, I think you're touching on what we would probably call agile delivery, right, or continuous delivery, where our clients don't want to push off from shore and do a big bang project where they don't get to see the results for 12 to 24 months. That's a lot of risk for them. So what Splunk enables us to do really is to do delivery and deliver value in agile sprints in, in three, 12, you know, 16 week sprints where we're iteratively giving them value. We also don't have to understand all of the data. If you're using relational databases, yeah. you pretty much have to understand everything before you push off from shore. With Splunk, I can know a minimal amount and start and deliver value, and then as I go, I'm learning more about my data, I can deliver more use cases and more value. It's interesting, you know, we'll go back to the old enterprise sales model. You know, you do a pilot or a POC, or a POC then a pilot, and then the pilot's the data, and that's what months do, right? And then, then the decision makes, and then you got to start all over. By the time that it'll happen, you're talking about months, maybe years, yeah, yeah. technology changes. That's right. You guys are doing essentially agile sprints that are kind of like little mini POCs. That's, that's correct. they're not POCs, they're actually real work. That, that's right. That's the new, seems like the new sales model, is that? Well, I, I, I would say it's something that with a rapid prototyping capability like a Splunk, it gives us that flexibility to do. Depending on what we're doing, we may not have that flexibility, we may be limited by the technology. How would you describe the strength of the Accenture Splunk partnership? I would say very strong. So, like I mentioned before, we, we started two and a half, three years ago. We just renewed that relationship in February. And we've added more practices from within Accenture, like our digital practice. So now we have strategy, digital, technology, and security. We're, we're focusing and doubling down in security in our IT markets, but also then starting to explore new industry verticals in business analytics and IoT. Um, as I explained earlier, we're bringing things to Splunk and they're helping us sell and they're bringing things to us and we're helping them sell. Um, and there's a lot of excitement. I mean, I think it's really a combination of the right people with the right industry knowledge at the right time with the right technology. Final question, you've been in the industry for a while, you've seen the waves, pretty big wave run now, a lot of confluence coming together, multiple different dimensions, cloud, data, scale, everything, speed. How, what's exciting you these days? What's the big story that people should pay attention to right now well, in I, this space? I think it really dovetails into Doug's theme, and I don't mean to, to really you know, piggyback on that, but it's true, and that is that so many of our clients you know, still have a lot of technical debt from decades ago, and we get to come in there and say, look, in a matter of weeks and months, we can help you make sense of this, we can help you uh, capture revenue you couldn't capture before, drive out costs that you couldn't drive out before, and reduce risk that you couldn't reduce before. So, I, I mean, it's it's probably the best time of my entire career, frankly. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, Kubernetes and certainly containers helps yeah. make those legacy workloads somewhat compatible with the modern infrastructure. But when you have those technical debt conversations, is the, are the customers kind of realizing, like, I'm on the verge of tech bankruptcy, what do I do? Is, that, is it more advisory? You guys have come in. Is it more counseling slash get developed? Yeah, or? yeah. A lot of times it's it's helping them to come in and, and assess what their situation is, help them build a roadmap into the future. Um, and sometimes it's rationalizing some of the, the technical debt. Uh, sometimes it's how can we augment what you already have, and then and then in the future as that reaches end of life, we almost just turn it off. But you're up and running, you know, on this other platform that we've augmented into that ecosystem. So, tech flow positive. There you go. Yeah, cash flow positive, take from technical tech debt, positive. from tech bankruptcy. I'll reuse to, that. Yeah. Mike, thanks for coming on, yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for the insights. John. Thanks for having me. Great insights. Cheers. We're getting all the data and the insights here. The workflow is rocking the cube. Second day of three days. I'm John Furrier. More coverage after this short break.